Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Today on the Manifest Telecast, I'm coming to you from a brand new excavation in the area of the Sea of Galilee of the city of Magdala. Right now, this is one of the most dynamic excavations happening in the entirety of the Holy Land. You know, for several years, we passed this site on tours, and it was basically just earth and ground and trees and rocks. Several years ago, they began to excavate here, and they found directly behind me, right off of my right shoulder, they found the synagogue from the time of Jesus. They recently found a coin dated to 29 AD, which was exactly the time that Christ was ministering. And there's a very famous woman from the city, Mary of Magdala, better known as Mary Magdalena. Now, this is powerful because when I stand here, I realize that Jesus himself ministered here. Perhaps Mary Magdalene herself was in the city, and Jesus may have been preaching in the synagogue right behind me when that great miracle took place, Mary Magdalene, of whom he cast out seven devils. But you see, my reason for standing here is more than just to invite you when you come to Israel to visit this brand new excavation at Magdala. My reason is to give you a message for America. Now, those of you that watch the Manifest Telecast in 180 nations of the world, you just kind of sit back and listen to this word today. You just kind of sit back and let me share this word with you because this word is going to be dealing with specifically the United States and some of the situations that we're in in the United States. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to the book of Leviticus. I want to read to you a warning that God gave to Israel in the ancient days. And I believe this warning right now has more connotation and more parallels to the United States than it ever has. Here's what the scripture says. God warns them in Leviticus 26 that, And if by these things you are not reformed by me, but you walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary to you, and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword against you that will execute the vengeance of my covenant. Now, I think the best thing for me to do is simply begin to open up to you from my spirit something that happened actually several months ago. It was right after the election of 2012, and the Lord began to speak to me about 2 o'clock in the morning right after the presidential election, and He began to share some things with me that I preached recently in a message in Cartersville, Georgia, simply titled, What the Lord Showed Me the Night of the Election. I don't really want to go into the details of that on this telecast, but I will share with you three things that came to my spirit. Number one, Let's say it this way. America presently will have three choices. Now, these three choices are either biblical or based on previous historical patterns. America will either have what we call a time of restoration. America will either have a time of revolution. Or America will have a time of reformation. Now, it's going to take me a few moments to share with you each of these. First of all, let's separate the church, which is a holy nation unto itself, from America, which is a secular nation, political, secular democracy unto itself. Even in the time of Christ, when the first century church existed, there was actually two different nations. There was the nation which was called Israel, but the Bible says in Peter that the church was a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. You see, God considers the church a spiritual nation while all of the other nations on earth are called natural political nations or societies of nations. Some of these, of course, uh, Rome and Greece and Media, Persia and Egypt were empires of, pa of the past. Now, when it comes to the spiritual nation, which is the church, God promises restitution or restoration. God says things like this, I'll restore to you the years that the locust have eaten, the caterpillar, the cankerworm, and the palmer worm have eaten, the great army which I've sent to you. Restoration is also found in the book of Acts chapter 3 when Peter talks about this and he says, you know, the heavens will receive Christ until the time of the restitution, and that word can mean in the Greek restoration of all things spoken up by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. 
Now, when God restores something, He takes something which has been devastated. He takes something which has been in ruin, and He rebuilds it. This was the promise that He gave to the prophets of the Old Testament. We talked about, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David and heal the breaches thereof. Some of the other prophetic scriptures that you can read, Joel is a pr prime example of that, about restoration. Now, let's take it from the spiritual because we know spiritually there is restoration spiritually promised to the body of Christ and to individual believers who will place their trust in Christ in the new covenant. Let's move that restoration idea to America. We have people that say things like this, let us restore the greatness of America. There is a real issue that you have when you begin to talk about restoring the greatness of America. And here's what it is. America has shifted morally and spiritually and culturally to the point that it is not the America that I grew up in. Many of you watching the telecast, if you're over 50 years of age, you will have to agree. Where is the patriotism? Where is the feeling that you get when the red, white, and blue is shown? Where is the patriotism you get when the ship comes in from a battle and the men exit the ship? You're just not there. In fact, I think the recent election proved that the nation is divided completely down the middle between a left-leaning ideology and a conservative ideology. So what does that mean? Here's what it means. If I say we're going to restore the greatness of America, when I restore a house, I go in and take the same house and I begin to paint it and I begin to you know, seal the cracks up and do whatever I need to do. But if you repair a house and you don't do it correctly, you know what's gonna happen? The cracks are going to eventually reappear. If there's a crack that comes in the foundation, all of your repairing in the world will do no good if the foundation becomes cracked. I wanna to say to you who are watching me in North America, our foundations have cracked because there are things that my father and your father and my great grandfather would have never believed that our nation is voting in. Whoever thought about we would legalize illegal drugs? Whoever thought or ever dreamed that we would say that marriage is not between one man and one woman? Who would ever think that we would say that a woman that has an infant in her womb that's nine months old, partial birth abortion, suck the brains out of the baby and kill it would be a normal thing? My great-grandfather, my father and father would literally roll over in their graves today if they could see America in the condition she's in. Now, here's my point. If we say we're going to restore America, we're never going to restore it where it was. It doesn't matter who the president is, who the Congress and the House and the Senate is. There'll never be a total restoration the way America was. Here's why. The culture has shifted, and once it shifts in a generation, you're never able to get it back unless you can raise up an entire new generation, and I'll get to that in a moment. Well, the second choice you have is to do what the Jewish people tried to do in the year 70 AD. Actually, it started in the year 66. The Romans were occupying this land. Back in that time, this city that is now in ruins called Magdala was in existence, along with Capernaum and Chorazim and Bethsaida. All these were the cities of the Galilee. In fact, in all the cities I just named, Christ himself ministered. But when these cities began to reject his ministry and they began to fall into unbelief, he said, woe unto you, Chorazim, woe unto you, Bethsaida, woe unto you, Caper Capernaum. Because if the miracles done in you would have even been done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. So these cities went into devastation because they went into unbelief. Now, let me say this to you. That's where America is, a nation that at least half the nation, you see it. You see it in the secular media. You see it in the talking heads of the media. You see it in the newspapers. You see it. There is a core of, of, of America, and I'll, I'll say it again. It's 50-50. It's split down the middle of people who call themselves believers, but they really don't believe the Bible because if they really believe the Word, there are people they would never put in office because the people they're putting in office are going to legalize abominations and bring a curse upon the nation. So obviously, they're either willfully ignorant or they're just totally ignorant to do some of the things they do. Because if you know the Scripture, there are things you cannot do and expect the favor of God to continue on you as, upon you as a nation. It's totally impossible. So what did they do in, in 66 AD? There was a group of Jewish rebels, and what these rebels did is they, they rose up a rebellion against the Romans. In fact, around 66 AD, somewhere in that area, there was a large number of Christians that fled the city of Jerusalem, and they went across the Jordan River into the area of Pela. And uh, Pela today, in fact, we passed it on our tour recently. It's on the Jordanian side, uh, what is today the country of Jordan. These people fled and they were protected while the city of Jerusalem burned. These Christians that listened to the words of Jesus and heeded his warning about getting out to the mountains of Judea, flee from those mountains and don't come back when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies. 
they heeded the words of Jesus and they were protected. But there were rebels. There were people that began to revolt against the system, against the Roman government. As they revolted against the system, they paid the price for it because they paid the price in their lives. I read somewhere years ago, I believe it was in the works of Josephus, that over 6,000 people died inside the walls of the city just from starvation and from war alone when the Roman soldiers finally took over. So here's the question I have to ask you. Does America need some kind of a, uh, a revolution? Do we need to rise up and raise up new parties and new organizations? And do we need to raise up new political systems and somehow revolt against the present system? Well, let me tell you what happens when you do that. You end up in a civil war. And that's exactly what happened when South Carolina seceded years ago from the Union and all the other states said they were going to do the same thing. It was a battle over cotton and it was a battle over slavery and it was a battle over the North taxing the South for cotton for their industry. It's a long story that you don't hear um, most secular people talk about when they talk about what actually helped initiate the Civil War. But the point is that if we start saying that we're going to secede from the Union and we start talking about revolution, it only leads to one thing. It leads to destruction. It leads to trouble. It leads to death. And eventually, even in America, it would lead to bloodshed. So personally, I don't think that some kind of a political revolution, that's not the cure for where we're at. It really isn't. Uh, to try to divide the Union up, the great states of America, and say half of us are going our own way and half of us are going the other way. I, mean, I even had a gentleman from Texas said, you know, if we, if we left the United States, what we could do is we could control the oil. We have the oil terminals. We have the pipelines down here. The Midwest has the food. They said we could control the whole U.S. if we controlled the food and the oil and told them you're going to have to. No, it doesn't work that way because the last thing we need to do in America is divide our nation up. We're already divided politically, socially, economically, morally. What do we need, more division? That's not the answer. Because anything with two visions is divisions, and that's what we've got right now is division in the country. As I was meditating on that, I looked at these ruins of these cities, and I realized something. That it was Jesus himself that warned them that because of their unbelief, because they didn't accept him, they didn't accept his word, they were going to be destroyed, and they were destroyed. And now they're in ruins. Now, the Roman Empire is a good example. The Roman Empire is very, very parallel to America. That is the Imperial Roman Empire to the West who used to headquarter out of Italy that controlled and occupied the Promised Land in the time of Christ, the time of the disciples, and in 70 AD destroyed the temple with the Roman 10th Legion. America is very parallel to that. Rome ran out of money. Rome began to tax the rich. The rich began to move out of the country. They began to tax the farmers. The farmers began to lose their land, turned it over to the government. And eventually the taxation and the debt is what one of the reasons why Rome was totally destroyed and eventually overtaken by 10 Germanic tribes. Are we going that way? If we don't have something that I'm going to get ready to tell you about, we are absolutely going that way. You know, they can, they can look at what we call a fiscal cliff and they can straighten it up and they can cut back here and they can add this here and they can print more money. But you can't keep going the way you go no matter how much money you print. When the ethics of your leadership and the moral of the morality of the country and even the spirit of America, listen, let me say it to you this way. I have over 10,000 partners, probably now about 12,000. I have a lot of partners that are business people. They own small businesses. In my lifetime, and I'm over 50 years of age, to be quite honest with you, about 53, but in my lifetime, I have never seen small businesses that were so discouraged. People that would work hard and say, I want to work hard. I want to leave my children an inheritance. I want to live the American dream. Nobody wants to live the American dream anymore. Do you know why? Because why work overtime to send your children to college? Why work overtime to make money to purchase a home? When the hand of the government reaches in and takes so much of it from you, a lot of my business friends says it's just not worth it. I'll cut back my business. I'll cut back my workers. I'll even close down businesses because of the health care mandate and all the other things that are taxing us. I've, had, I've literally had men that own corporations, major corporations like chemical plants, factories, who have simply said, it's not worth it anymore. Let me tell you a story very quickly. A man once shared with me how that he dealt with horses and he, he would take a wild horse and he would learn to break that horse into where you could ride it. And he said, what you have to do is you have to break the will of the horse, but not the spirit of the horse. He said, once you break the spirit of the horse, it's really not worth anything. And then he said, when you deal with children, it's the same thing. If you deal with a rebellious child and you begin to break the will of the child down, that's one thing, dis by discipline. But if you beat that child and criticize that child and tell that child it's never going to amount to anything, you break the spirit of that child down 
And guess what happens? It, it, it ends up in depression. It ends up in defeat. That child will never amount to anything once it's been cursed by its own parents. This is what I believe has happened in America. I don't know if it's by choice or if it's by chance. I don't know if it's on purpose, and I don't know if it's just something that's happening. But I see the spirit of the American people being broken. I see men who have owned businesses who are no longer interested in owning businesses. I see people who have hired people that said they're no longer interested in hiring people. I had a businessman tell me, he said, I own three companies. I'm about to just shut down two of them. He said, why should I work my life and work overtime and all of a sudden make money and then it all goes out the door to, the, to a government that spends it in ways that I don't even approve of. Now this is not, and I want to make this very clear, I'm pro-American. I love my government. I love the judicial side. I love the executive side. I love all of it. I really do. I love being an American. I'm proud to be an American, but I'm very, very concerned about where we are because if we say we're going to restore it, I think restoration I don't know that we can actually do that, not to the place that it was. I mean, look, we had 20 years of three different presidents who said they were pro-life. Yet abortion was never overturned. You know why it wasn't overturned? Because it's inbred in the American culture. It's here to stay. And some of the issues that we're about to deal with in America, some of the issues are actually issues of abomination, issues of who is going to be honored with the covenant of marriage. Will it be a man and a woman or a man with a man? These are very serious issues. That's the issue we're headed toward. Now, if we think that we can just do what we want to do and act the way we wish to act and pass legislation that's against the Word of God and have the favor of God and seeing God bless America, it's not going to happen. But there is a third choice, and this is the choice that the Lord spoke to me uh, on the night of the election about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I shared it with my mentoring institute. I shared it with the Extreme Youth Ministry, and I want to share it with you today, and that is this. There's something that happened in the 1500s called a Reformation movement. Back in that day, the Roman church system had gotten corrupt. They were selling indulgences. There was all sorts of things taking place that was totally contrary to Scripture. So Martin Luther rose up and penned a, um, a thesis, a 95-point uh, thesis on the door of Wittenberg Chapel and started a Reformation movement, Reformation to reform something, to take that which exists and reform it. Here's where I think we're at. I think we're at a situation where so many people, even in church, don't hear real doctrinal teaching. They know what they believe, but they don't know why they believe it. And they, they have no idea what Christian apologetics are. How do you defend your faith? How do you prove there's no evolution that God created the heavens and the earth? How do you prove that the soul and the spirit comes into an infant at moment of, at the moment of conception and not after the umbilical cord is cut as some politicians believe? How do you prove that the first covenant in the Bible was a covenant of marriage when God cut the side of Abraham and out from him came Eve? This is what happened in the early Reformation. They took the teaching of the just shall live by faith. They took the Word of God and they began to dig into the Word and begin to write books and write articles and get the Word of God out on the depth of God's Word. And as the Word penetrated the darkness, the light came. As the Word penetrated the hardened hearts of men, then the shell was broken and the nation was reformed. Religion was reformed. Here's what we need. We don't need to try to simply restore the greatness of America because there's some people that don't want the America that you and, you and I grew up with. There's people that don't want a Christianized America. There are people that want to do away with the idea that America was founded by Christian principles, Judeo-Christian beliefs. So, because that idea is being so suppressed and crushed, can't have a revolution. All it does is leave the bloodshed. I'm not for revolution, but I am for reformation. And I do believe, and I want everybody watching me worldwide, I'm going to ask those of you that have youth ministries, those of you that are youth pastors, those of you that are youth leaders, those of you that are pastors of churches, I want you to get this with me, that we need another reformation. We need a third great awakening in America. And you know how it comes? It comes through prayer. That's why every Thursday we have prayer meetings with 80 to sometimes 120 people who pray intently every Thursday night. We're praying for this reformation to break out in America and start in Bradley County in Cleveland, Tennessee, where over a hundred years ago, 40 miles from us, the very first outpouring of the Spirit on the East Coast came in Murphy, North Carolina. And we're believing everything's going to go for a full circle and God's going to bring another outpouring and start it there and spread it like a fire throughout Tennessee and West Virginia, Kentucky, Georgia, and even to the nations of the world. And this reformation has to be based on the in-depth teaching of the Word of God. Sometimes pastors have to teach practical teaching because their people are dealing with so many practical issues. But we need to preach 
the doctrines of the Bible. The, I mean, these are the teachings that when Paul stood on Mars Hill and preached redemption, and when you read about the uh, apostles, how they went throughout the world, and they would begin to preach redemption, and they would preach covenant, and they would preach life in Christ, it changed entire cities. So would you join me in prayer for a reformation, a real true reformation to come to the United States, something that would reform. Here's the deal. It's never going to happen politically, folks. We're divided. We're going to keep being divided. The Republican, the Democrats are going to not work with each other. They're not going to get together. It doesn't matter who you elect. But God's people, if my people are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. God said, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. The Reformation is not going to be political. It's going to be spiritual because when you change the hearts of people, you change the darkness into light. You change the death into life. You change the sadness into joy. Will you join me in praying? for a third awakening and for a reformation in the United States of America. And we're going to, you're going to be hearing about that if you go to perrystone.org. You're going to be hearing about that on the Stone Report, on the Manifest Telecast in the future. But I have, I have a, something prophetic that I want to share with you, a resource material. Would you just stay tuned and listen to the announcement? We'll be back in just a moment as we continue sharing with you what God has given us. This was our first message from our recent Israel trip. And over the next several months, you're going to be seeing over 27 brand new messages from different locations that I taped recently in Israel. So everything you're going to see this year is brand new and has never been aired on Manifest before. So I want you to get ready for the Israel tapings and programs coming from Israel because actually these are some of the favorite programs that people have and we get a lot of response from people who say, we enjoyed the programs from Israel. Now this message was very important because it was preached in the location of where the cities that Christ once ministered in have been excavated. But more than that, the word that I gave you, uh, the necessity of a reformation, not a revolution, not even trying to restore something that was old back again, but taking things that have been lost, truth that has been distorted, the biblical revelation, that has been suppressed and bringing the Word of God out to this generation as never before. People have asked me, why are you constructing this facility here in Cleveland, Tennessee? I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to have hubs throughout the United States and for those of you outside the United States in different parts of the world, where that particular hub is going to be a headquarters. It's going to be a center where people can come together for the moving of the Holy Spirit, for times of refreshing, for camp meetings, conferences, and great events, and to have a headquarters for a reformation that we need again. We need to take the Word of God. You know, people are believing things today that are not even in the Scripture. There's heretical teaching that's spreading through books and bookstores and through programs and even sometimes Christian programming. I hate to say it, but it's true. So Pastor Mark Casto, who's the pastor of our youth group and also myself, the head of VOE and the director of the OCI Ministries, we feel like this is a significant moment. Now, I want to say something. Many of you have written us and you said, can you give us an update? Well, I wanted to show you the update. First of all, I want to thank so many of you who have responded over the past several months to help us get this building debt free. We are literally within inches of this building being debt free before we ever complete it. That's because so many of you have been obedient. Someone who is an anonymous giver has given quite a bit to help us with this project. We don't know who you are, but we're praying that God will abundantly bless you for the sacrifice that you made for this generation that's coming up. Now, right now we're going to take you on a brief tour. We're going to show you the big youth room. This room will hold about 800 people. This will be where our Tuesday night services will be conducted with Pastor Mark, and I'll be preaching one Tuesday night a month. And this is also where some of our Reformation weekends will begin. And then we have the large facility where our Partners Conference, it's called our Partners Homecoming, will be held the third week of July of this coming year. And also the main event will be moved to the main facility here at the, at the world headquarters of VOE, Voice of Evangelism OCI Ministries. And so you can see we have a great lobby area. You know, I wanted to have a lobby area for fellowship. We have a great cafe for fellowship because one of the things I, I knew, saw growing up in the great conferences and camp meetings that I attended was the fellowship of the ministers and the great people of God and just how you got to know people and pray with them. I just want to rebuild that in this facility that we have. We're going to have Reformation weekends. We're going to have special conferences. We're going to have a Southern Gospel camp meeting, the main event, the partners conferences. 
There's going to be a lot of activity taking place right here at the OCI Omega Center International. The theme that the Lord gave me is where lambs become lions. Now, I told the Lord, I said, I'm not going to work on the camp until this building is paid for. And because we're on the verge of seeing this building completed and paid for, we're about 65% complete in the building process right now. It should be completed by the early part of June. But I want to already share with you that we're going to be going over the hill here to a beautiful piece of property and building the Promised Land Youth Camp. Now, the youth camp is going to be a tremendous place where young people can come throughout the summer months of all ages and be taught the Word of God. I'm very excited about this. This is where my heart has been for many, many, many years. And not only are we going to build that particular youth camp, but we're going to also set up a mentoring center for young people that from September through May, young people can be mentored. And uh, I'll tell you more about that when the time comes. We're not ready for that yet, but it's going to be set up right here on the property as well. We believe, in fact, I know, that the Holy Spirit's going to speak to people to help us to complete not only this project, but the youth camp as well. See, this is the way I look at it. I won't be here forever. Jesus is going to come, and he's going to, when he comes, if I'm living, you're going to go with him. Someone said, what's going to happen to the building? Well, hopefully it'll still be existence in, in existence in the millennium, and ministry will go on right after Jesus comes back. At least that's what I hope. But until Jesus comes, we have to occupy till he gets here, and we have to do the things to get the gospel out to the nations of the world, especially this next generation. So we're believing God to help us with this, and I believe many of you their day will come that your kids and grandkids, even as even far away as the West Coast, are going to be coming out here for camps and for mentoring. And some of you are going to be out here for some of the great conferences and camp meetings that we're going to have. Cleveland, Tennessee is a great city. We love living here. We love the people here. Been here now for well over 31 years. My wife and I moved here after we were married. And so I wanted to say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have participated. And so we're going to keep you updated throughout the year and give God all the glory and praise for what He's doing. Because it's, it's, this is not my project. This is a dream. It's God's project. We've given it over to Him. And we believe it's going to be a great, great reformation that God's going to send and touch the lives of people. Now, let me say something to you, just real quick. This is the last week that you have the opportunity to get the Hickson CDs and DVDs. So if you have not ordered them yet, please go ahead and order them now. The information is up on the screen. And uh, while the information is on the screen there, I want to share something with you. I want to tell you that we're also going to be coming to some areas very, very soon. We're going to be coming to Brooksville, Florida. We're going to be coming to the Newport News, Virginia area. We're going to be coming to uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, West Monroe, Louisiana. And also we've added Tampa, Florida. So go to the website at perrystone.org. Look up the information on the website for the conferences which are be, going to be coming in your ear. There's no fee to attend our conference. Come as you are, bring as many people as you can, and we're going to have fresh revelation from God for this year for you and your home and your family. Now don't forget, the Israel programs are now beginning. You just saw the first one. And for the next pro approximately 25 weeks, all the programs you're going to see on Manifest are brand new, recently taped from Israel, and we've also got some very exciting brand new locations. Thank you for your prayers. We're looking forward to hearing from you. God bless you. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2013 Israel Tour, November 25th through December 4th. Call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org for more information and how to register. Seating is limited, so call today.